Hi everyone, hope you're all doing alright out there. Um, just wanted to say thank you to everybody who has submitted a question for this Q&A. Um, if you didn't know, I recently hit 20,000 subscribers, uh, which is absolutely insane. So thank you so much to everybody who has subscribed. Um, feels like a long old grind for me to be honest. I originally started YouTube, well I joined YouTube in 2006, posted my first video in 2007. Um, and yeah, I didn't hit 20,000 subscribers until 2020, which seems crazy when you think about it, but, you know, until a couple of years ago, I was basically just making the videos I wanted to make, but I think a couple of years ago, I really did try and, and make that change and just make videos that you guys wanted to see, so I remember there being a time when, you know, when I uploaded a new video, I was just hoping for about 10,000 views on it. But now, like, it, it's been crazy, you know, it completely has surpassed that. You know, I'm getting 50,000, 100,000, you know, completely insane numbers on new videos now. So thank you so much for that. Also, thank you so much to my channel members as well for supporting the channel. I really do appreciate that. Um, it really helps me to kind of upgrade my tech, buy more awesome Gran Turismo stuff to showcase in my videos, and yeah, so thank you so much for your support on that. So yeah, actually, um, I just, you know what, do people still do Q&A videos? You know what, I've, I've never done one before, so even if, you know, they might be a bit old-fashioned, I don't know, but I think it's long overdue, to be honest. I was actually going to do one when I hit 13,000 subscribers way back. Which seems like a long time ago now, and that's because it was. <laughs> it's a good couple of years ago now, I reckon. Um, but for one one reason or another, I, I never really got around to filming that video. I think other projects just got in the way. Uh, but I still have those questions that people asked from that video, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine those old questions with these new ones uh, and basically just do them all in one single video. So I hope you enjoy it. Okay, so I've, got, I've actually got the questions on my phone here, so I'm just going to go ahead and read them out. So, a question from Toma, or Toma, he says, well, I don't know if it's a he actually, they, they say, what made you so interested in collecting all this info about Gran Turismo into one place? Uh, and to be honest, I think that just stems from my interest in Gran Turismo as a series, and also my interest in just finding out new things about my favourite games, you know, it just feels like no matter how old a game is, new information about that game is just being found out all the time. And it's not specific to Gran Turismo, I mean you've only got to look at speedrunning for example to see how many small little things are being uncovered like all the time about these old games that nobody ever knew before and it's just it's amazing that after all this time I think you can still find replay value in your favourite games. So that's pretty much why really. Cool, question from Tony, why do you love GTA 3 so much? So yeah, pretty similar question. Um, yeah, Grand Theft Auto 3, definitely one of my favourite games of all time. And I think the reason that I love that game so much is just because I remember when I was going to get my PS2 when it first came out. I wasn't actually going to get GTA 3 because I'd never, I was too young basically to, to play the original Grand Theft Auto trilogy on PS1. Um, so I'd always kind of gone to the driver series of video games. I still love Driver, don't get me wrong, but that was kind of my, my Grand Theft Auto replacement because I was too young for the, you know, the, the 18 rating Grand Theft Auto games when I was younger. Um, so yeah, so when Grand, Theft, sorry, when Grand Theft Auto 3 was coming out, um, I actually wasn't going to get it because I wasn't overly familiar with the series back then. But I remember one of my best mates called Will, who actually lived next door to uh, me and my parents. Uh, he was going to get it and it was that kind of thing where, you know, he was slightly older than me and, you know, your your perception when you're younger of what's cool is often based on what the older kids like. So I think it was like once he said that he was going to get Grand Theft Auto 3, I was like, right, I've got to get Grand Theft, Grand Theft Auto 3 as well now. Uh, and you know what? I was so glad that I did because I think in terms of video games, that has been the game that blew my mind the most when it first came out, you know? Um, thinking back to what we had beforehand, you know? When Grand Theft Auto 3 came out, I'd just never seen anything like it before. So yeah, it was just a completely new gaming experience for me back then. Okay, question from Nick NT. What made you start collecting beta builds of games and where did you score them at? Cool, so yeah, quite quite similar really. Why did I start collecting beta builds of games? Um, because I had a real interest in these game series like Gran Turismo, like Grand Theft Auto. 
I felt like I'd explored like every inch of those games and I was just looking for like more replay value really. So you know, in, in terms of the Gran Turismo Special Editions, I know that they're not exactly beta builds, but you know, the demos do show uh, the games in an earlier stage of development, uh, so I think you can probably count that. Um, and it was just, yeah, it was trying to get more replay value out of the game. And also, I just find it really interesting to know what was changed during development. I almost liken it to like archaeology in a way, which sounds weird, but it's almost like it's looking at what was there before and what was changed and you're looking for new information about stuff that you didn't know before. So yeah, it's kind of like video game archaeology in a way, that's kind of how I'd describe it. Cool. Question from Sage Asen... oh god. Sage As Asensio? <laughs> Sorry. What are five things you dislike in each GTA and be honest? Um, a bit of a tough question for me because um, I haven't really played the original trilogy that much and I haven't really played GTA 4 and GTA 5 in quite a while. Just feels like they keep releasing GTA 5 over and over again at the moment, you know? Um, so I haven't really kind of bought into all that to be honest, so I don't see the point. Um, GTA 4, um, I was never the biggest fan of GTA 4, weirdly, because it just felt like to me, you know, when we had Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, you know, I just remember there being like all that countryside, all that desert space that you could just explore, and then, you know, when I, when I loaded up GTA 4, it just felt like there was none of that, you know, it was just purely city-based, you know, and that, I just felt like it was really missing that aspect of the game. Um, so I guess that's one thing I like about, I dislike about GTA 4, I should say. So stuff that I dislike about GTA 3, I guess it just, uh, it's still fun to play, but it just hasn't, I don't know if it has aged that well, to be fair. It feels like the controls are a little bit clunky now, but hey, you know, less clunky than the old Tomb Raider games, right? So there's that. Um, yeah, I really don't know if I could think of five things about each GTA. Obviously in the first, uh, sorry, in GTA 3 and GTA Vice City, you can't swim. Uh, which was always a big downside, you know, I never really understood that. Why, you know, why can't the main character swim? It's such, uh, it's such a normal thing. Most people, um, you know, at least in the Western civilizations, can swim now. They get swimming lessons when they're younger. But obviously, you know, in development terms, it was just a way uh, for the developers to enforce boundaries on the players, I guess. Um, there's not much that I actually dislike about GTA San Andreas. To be honest, I'm struggling to think of anything, really. <laughs> Cool, well, I'll, I'll move on to the uh, the next question. Could you show off your current collection? Well, you know what? Um, my current collection has just grown so big now. Um, I think the best thing to do would actually be to cover it in a separate video. Sean Hart says, What is your favourite Gran Turismo in the whole franchise? Damn, tough question. You know, I'd probably have to say Gran Turismo 2, I think. I think that is the one that I played the most as a child. I, I had Gran Turismo 1 before I had Gran Turismo 2, unsurprisingly, and I absolutely loved that game, but it just felt like Gran Turismo 2 built on everything we loved about the original Gran Turismo. Gran Turismo 3 and 4 were obviously fun as well. I didn't play uh, GT5 and GT6 as much, so I think by then I was a little bit older, and uh, you know, when you get a bit older, responsibilities get in the way and you don't have as much time to play your favourite games anymore, which kind of sucks, but you know... Recently, when I was filming all the uh, the Gran Turismo Easter egg videos, it was actually really great to go back to GT5 and GT6. And I felt kind of way more nostalgic about them than I actually thought I would do. So it was great to kind of revisit those games. I felt like I had a brand new appreciation for them after that. Not that I didn't like them beforehand, but yeah, so yeah, it was just really great to revisit GT5 and GT6. In particular, do you know the uh, the music? in the, the lobby, if you like, before you start a race on Gran Turismo 5. Man, honestly, that, that hit me, like, with a wave of nostalgia. You know, the music was so good that it was just like, you didn't even want to start the race, you just wanted to sit there and listen to it forever, so. That was, that was really good. Cool, so, question from Jared Punzalan. First, have you ever played any other racing games like Need for Speed, Forza and F1? Yeah, to be honest, I I played loads of different racing games when I was younger. The ones that do spring to mind are Need for Speed. I played Need for Speed right from Need for Speed 4, which was high stakes uh, in North America and Road Challenge in Europe, which is the one that I had. Same game, but a different title, pretty much. There were a couple of differences, but overall the same game. Um, and, you know, obviously had 
Need for Speed Underground, Underground 2 on the, the PlayStation 2 and a few more after that. Um, I was into some rally games on the PS1 as well, like V-Rally and Colin McRae. Those were great games. I've never been like the biggest fan of Formula 1 racing games, to be honest. I don't know why, because uh, I am actually a massive Formula 1 fan in real life, but I just never found the games as enjoyable and as intuitive as, you know, as Gran Turismo, really. And he says, second, your GTA 3 series was amazing. Thank you, Jared. Appreciate that. Are you planning to do another one with GTA 4 and 5? Um, to be honest, I probably will make more GTA videos, but they're probably going to be on the PS2 trilogy. Uh, well, I say trilogy. To be honest, Liberty City Stories and Vice City Stories were both released on PS2 after they released were released on the PSP as well. So I don't know if you could really call it a trilogy, but... Um, anyway, so probably not on GTA 4 and 5, but yes, definitely on some of the other Grand Theft Auto games. Cool. Question from Fran Soriano Morales. What's your personal car and <laughs> which one would you like to own? Well, I'll tell you what, guys. Um, my first ever car was a Toyota Aigo. <laughs> I've got to be honest with you, <laughs> it was terrible. <laughs> it was absolutely terrible. It only cost like £4,000, uh, which is, to be fair, it's probably more than most people spend on their first car. Um, and you know what? Like, uh, My wife actually bought that car. First of all, it was actually, I learned to drive quite late. I learned to drive when I was about 25, uh, which is a lot later than most people do. Um, so basically, she bought that car for her to drive before I could even drive. But then when I did pass my test, uh, I passed first time, by the way. Just just saying, just saying. Um, and when I did pass my test, obviously, I was driving that car as well. And man, it had the worst automatic gearbox I have, I have ever experienced. I learned to drive in a manual and I quite enjoyed it, but then, you know, it didn't really make sense for me to buy a separate car. Um, I didn't really have a long commute to work or anything, so it just made sense for us to share a car. But yeah, that automatic gearbox, man, it was terrible. It was, I think it was a single clutch system as opposed to like the, the DSG gearbox in, you know, Audis and VWs. And it was just so slow, honestly. You couldn't exploit a gap, you couldn't you know, nip out at a roundabout or anything, it was, yeah, it was terrible. And the car that I actually have now is a VW Polo. It's nothing special, and, but again, bought it outright. I just don't really like to have, you know, cars on finance. Uh, I just like to save my money, really. But having said that, we are actually looking to get a new car at the moment. Um, but me and my wife just, we cannot decide on which car we want. You know, I want something and she wants something completely different. She's into the whole kind of crossover SUV thing. She'd like uh, a VW Tiguan or a Touareg, for example. So I was looking at like a uh, VW Golf GTI with the performance pack. I think that would be really cool. And also a Scirocco R. That looks amazing. But I, I believe, I don't know if I'm right in saying this, but I think the Scirocco is front wheel drive. And that just felt like a lot of a lot of power. I think it had about 270 brake horsepower. And that felt like a lot of power to put in a front wheel drive car. I could imagine it understeering quite a lot. Um, but yeah. So what else did I like? Ah. Oh. Oh, I do like the Jaguar F-Type. Uh, they, they are gorgeous cars, but probably a bit probably a bit too expensive and also probably not the most practical car in the world, got to be honest. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's the kind of thing that we're looking at at the moment. Cool, all right. Question from Isaac77. I have to thank you for interesting me into Gran Turismo to beyond most people. You're welcome. I have yet to start collecting anything like what you have. My question is this. Out of all the Gran Turismo's, which one did you get hooked on and made you the way you are with the series? I know 3 was mine and 4 is my favourite. And another question, in your opinion, what's the least liked Gran Turismo game? Mine would have to be 5. Thanks for the content, dude, and keep it up. Well, thank you very much, Isaac. That's an awesome comment. I love to get comments like that. It really kind of uh, makes everything feel worthwhile. So thank you so much for that. Um, Cool, so uh, out of all the Gran Turismo's, uh, you know, which one made me hooked on the series? Uh, it was definitely the original Gran Turismo, actually. Um, my, again, my neighbour, Will, uh, I originally played it at his house. And, you know, I played it there and I just, I loved it and I had to get it for myself. Um, and what's my least favourite? <sighs> Probably have to say Gran Turismo Sport, to be honest. Although, I have to appreciate what they've done with it as time's gone on. You know, they've introduced a lot more uh, single player aspects to the game and I really do love that about it, but you know, I'm more of a traditional gamer, I don't really um, go online that much, I just love um, a really good single player mode that I can just, you know, 
spend an evening doing just by myself. So that's, yeah, that's just me really. Cool. A que question from Ike then, lol. Why don't you play with GTA Vice City? I do. And I have recorded a few videos of it as well, so check them out. So a question from locked to rockstar What made you start collecting GTA and Gran Turismo merchandise and beta builds? So yeah, similar question to what we've had before. Um, basically, it was just wanting to find out brand new things about some of my favourite game series, to be honest. Uh, qu question from Christopher Poindexter. What other games, hell, whatever mu movie, music, TV, art, etc. do you like besides the ones you prominently feature on your channel? So in terms of games, um, I was always a big Tekken and Soul Calibur fan when I was growing up, still am today. Um, I can't say I play the brand new Tekkens to be honest, it's just hard to find the time to uh, invest into a lot of new games these days. Um, but classic Tekken, yeah, definitely. Uh, music, uh, I'll tell you what, I, my music taste is quite varied. Uh, but I'd say most of the stuff that I like are, uh, I don't know if you guys in America will get this, but uh, Manchester bands. Basically, they Manchester is obviously a, a city in the UK, you will have heard of that. Um, and it just seems like over the years they've produced, you know, like more awesome bands than anywhere else. I, you know, that's up for debate, that's just the way I see it, you know, like Oasis, Stone Roses, uh, The Smiths. So I absolutely love all those bands, you know, definitely more than I can, I can think of just off the top of my head. So definitely that, you know, I like rock music, indie, I like a little bit of like early 90s rap and stuff like that, that's, that's really cool. I don't really like modern rap music, because um, I just find it quite monotonous, but I think uh, back in the early 90s it was, um, yeah, it was just better. It was uh, a lot more melodic, I think. And I think the lyrics were a lot more meaningful than they are now. Um, but yeah, a lot of different stuff, to be honest. Uh, Movies-wise, I love thrillers. I absolutely love thrillers, yeah. I like a movie that holds my attention because it keeps me guessing all the way through. Uh, question from, uh, apologies if I am <laughs> pronouncing this wrong. Oh, for God's sake, man, I can't read this. Gwilaum? Gwilaum? Sorry. Sorry. Have you ever tried to code a game yourself? Uh, no. I haven't. Because I have no coding skills whatsoever. Uh, another question from Sage Asensio. Uh, he says, or she says, How old are you? Uh, I'm 30 years old. And I don't like saying it because it's really weird to have turned 30. I'm actually 31 this month. Um, I've heard that uh, once you hit 30, you know, 30 to 40 just kind of flies by. And I really hope that's not the case. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, nearly 31. Cool, a uh, question from Redline Racer. Which item in your GT collection is your favorite and what is one item you wish you had? Um, tough to kind of narrow it down uh, to the one item I wish I had. Um, I'd probably say a beta build of Gran Turismo 2. Like, it would be absolutely amazing to get the E3 build of Gran Turismo 2, but it's highly unlikely that that will ever happen. Um, so my favourite item in my Gran Turismo collection is probably my beta build of the original Gran Turismo. Again, you know, never thought I would see something like that, but you know, sometimes this stuff just turns up for sale. And you know, if you're lucky enough to get it, uh, yeah, it's a great feeling. Um, yeah, the one item I wish I had um, in terms of Gran Turismo, you know, in terms of stuff that's definitely out there. The VW Lupo GT4 Special Edition. I do quite want that. Um, there's a Nissan Micra Special Edition. That doesn't sound very interesting, does it? But it is a, a pretty rare Special Edition. Oh, and also, oh, the, uh, the Gran Turismo 3 uh, trial version. Like, uh, what was it called? Basically the silver one. I think there was like a version A and a version B or a 1 and 2, but yeah, like the original uh, silver disc, I, I don't have that, so that would be really good to get. Cool. Um, question from, man, all these names are so hard to pronounce. Shuaib Ali, are you from the UK and which city? So I'm originally, uh, yes I am from the UK, uh, I'm originally from near Manchester, but just across the border into Cheshire. Um, I'm actually from a, near a place called Stockport, which uh, isn't particularly famous. Um, there's a band called Blossoms which are from Stockport which I absolutely love. They're amazing. And there's also an actress called Michelle Keegan as well who's quite famous in the UK, not sure about outside the UK, uh, but she's also from Stockport. 
Uh, I actually live near Leeds now. Uh, I moved over here for work. Um, it's really nice around here actually. There's a, there's a lot of countryside. Uh, I love to go on walks and stuff. So yeah, it's really nice. Cool. Question from Gabriel Rocha. What made you interested in retro racing games? Um, basically, those are the games that I grew up with, so although they're retro now, you know, they were new to me at the time, so it's just a, a long-standing interest in the games that I grew up with, really. Cool. Uh, question from Raymond Sanders II, Ultimate Edition. Wow, alright then. <laughs> nice name. If you could change three things about any GTA game, what would it be? Uh, oh, good lord. Um, definitely the ability to swim in the older GTAs. Ah, uh, oh, yeah, on, Gra on Grand Theft Auto 3, I used to hate it when uh, you used to die and you would lose all your weapons. Hated that. But I think they fixed that first in GTA San Andreas. I think there was one particular girlfriend you could get who was a police officer. And basically, if you, you, you got in a relationship with her, I think you would keep your weapons after you die. If I remember right, it has been a while. Um, I don't know about three things. I'm trying to think of a third thing. Uh, I guess the ability to store more cars in your garage on GTA 3 as well, uh, and you know there are more safe houses on Vice City, but still not enough to store all those special vehicles, you know. Cool. So, question from Relevo: What do you want back in GTA 3, and how old are you? So, yeah, nearly 31. And uh, what do I want back in GTA 3? All the beta features. I would just love to see them. Right. Question from Nitro Plus. They say, plain question, but what is your all-time favourite Gran Turismo game? So, yeah, I think we've discussed this one, so that would have to be a Gran Turismo 2. Even though it wasn't finished, technically. So, uh, question from Rico Collier Daniels. Will there be a video showing all the prize cars, including arcade mode, of Gran Turismo 3? Yes. I haven't started working on it yet, but yes, that is definitely one that I am intending to do. Cool. Question. Another question from Jared Punzalan. Hey, you passed. <laughs> I started actually a question. I didn't actually read it. it. Says, "Hey, you passed 13,000 subscribers. Congrats! Thank you very much. Appreciate that so much. Really do." Um, question from Calico Electronico F E M. Can you share the assets from Simpsons Hit and Run? Uh, yes, this is definitely something that I mean to do. I have actually shared the uh, the beta build that I have of the Simpsons Hit and Run. Um, you can download that from Hidden Palace. Uh, I will put a link in the description. And finally, a question from And War. How mi how many <laughs> how many versions of GT do you have? Can you do a video showing them all? Uh, Got to be honest, I can't actually recall how many different versions I've got. It's you know my collection's grown so much, uh, so much so that I can't even keep track of it. Um, I actually don't even have enough space to keep it all at my house. Uh, I've still got some of it at my parents' house for safekeeping. Um, and can I do a video showing them all? Yes, definitely at some point, definitely. Cool, so those are all the uh, the older questions from my 13k video that never happened. So now, let's move on to the, to the actual recent questions. Cool, okay. So moving on to the, uh, the more recent questions. Got a question from Santiago Mercado Musri. Congrats on 20k. Thank you so much, man. Appreciate it. I know the niche for Gran Turismo content is rather small on YouTube, but your content is so great that for a fan of the series, it has been worth subbing to. Thank you so much, man. I really do appreciate it. Question. How did you come into possession of such a large collection of GT-related memorabilia? To be honest, uh, I, mainly because I've just been collecting for so long now. Um, I'm trying to think when I actually started collecting. Uh, it's probably about 2011, as a guess. And I started collecting because before that, I had like absolutely no idea that all these special editions and demos of Gran Turismo even existed. So when I, I first started learning about them, it was just like this whole new world of Gran Turismo that I'd never explored. And, you know, I've just been collecting over a large period of time, and that's just how I've built it up, really. Cool. Question from AlexM1005. I love your content, great research, good quality. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Question. What cut car would have been great in GT2? Also, why was the Vitz pink? Uh, what cook car would have been great in GT2? Oh, it's got to be the uh, the McLaren F1, hasn't it? You know, not the road car. I don't think there was any actually any hard evidence that that was ever going to be in the game. But like the SOK McLaren or the SOK McLaren, I don't know uh, how it's pronounced really. Um, from JGTC, I think that would have been awesome. 
that would have been great to see. Uh, why was the Vips pink? Man, yeah, you're going to have to ask the developers on that one. I don't know why the, Vi the Vips was pink. Uh, or maybe you could ask Rhino GT4. Cool, so <laughs> question from Cold Warrior 650 Cool, so he says, oh, sorry, they say, I don't know uh, what gender that is. <laughs> um, love what you do, Matt. Thank you. That's awesome. Question, when it comes to doing Gran Turismo related research, do you also check that if said information has been looked into already? I.e. taking any Honda to Tokyo Route 246 and taking a photo near the Honda building. Uh, so in that specific example, yes, that information was already out there. Um, I think in terms of the uh, the Easter egg videos, I think a lot of that information is already out there. But I just I couldn't find any videos where everybody had just, uh, or at least someone, had just brought it together in one place. You know, it felt like all that information was just scattered across the internet. So I just wanted to create kind of one true resource for people who were interested in Gran Turismo Easter eggs. Um, and when I do Gran Turismo related research, yeah, it's just basically internet based, really. Uh, but also, I do get um, a lot of help from other members of the, the Gran Turismo community on, on YouTube, like Super Fritzio and uh, Submaniac as well, so I <laughs> try to think of names off the top of my head. Um, so people like that, there's definitely people I'm forgetting, so apologies for that, but yeah, those are two that kind of stand out as people who, who know tons about the games and really do help with my videos, so that's really cool. Cool, question from C Chair. What if we, uh, wait, what? Hang on, I don't, I don't even get this question. <laughs> what if we kissed at a Mines Lancer Evolution 5 at a Suzuka circuit? Joke, joke, unless. Don't know how to respond to that, man. So I'm just going to move on to the next one. So, question from Christos Pulios. Congratulations on hitting 20k subs. Thank you. Appreciate it. What My question is, what was your first car in real life and did GT inspire its purchase? Um, as I said, it was a Toy Toyota Igo and did GT inspire it? Definitely not. As I, I'm trying to think whether it's ever... I think it could have possibly been on a Gran Turismo game. But I'm not sure. Um, if I, You know what, if I, if I were to buy um, a car inspired by something I've driven on Gran Turismo, uh, it would probably be a Nissan GTR. I know Jimmy Broadbent actually bought one recently and man, I was so jealous of that. I really was jealous, so yeah, hopefully I can do the same one day, uh, but my wife would never sign that off, <laughs> trust me. <laughs> um, right, so, question from Yunosu13, I got some game related questions here, which GT do you have the best memories with? You know, like, game of childhood and all that? So, although I've mentioned a lot um, about having great memories of GT2, I think my most nostalgic memories, I guess, are probably of GT1. Uh, I used to play that game with my dad, which was really fun. He had his own save game, so sometimes like I would play it and he would watch me, or he would play it and I would watch him. Um, but what I do remember is that he, like, ah, oh, well, first of all, we, we didn't have as good a tellies back then, like TVs, you know, like the quality was really bad, and it was always really dark for some reason. And I don't think his eyesight was the best either, still isn't. Uh, to this day, it's not like it's got any better. But um, sometimes, like he really struggled to see whether the, whether a corner was going left or right on the night tracks, like special stage route eleven. So I do have this one really specific memory of him, like turning the wrong way into a corner and going right into the barrier. Uh, so yeah, that was uh, that was an experience. Cool. One question. Uh, oh, sorry. This is from Rico Collier Daniels again. Haven't I just seen that name? Oh, was that was that on the last video? No way. Long time subscriber. Thank you. One question. Will you be able to do price cars for Gran Turismo 3? It's the same question again. Oh man. So that means that um, when I originally put up the, the Q&A that I was going to do when I hit 13,000 subscribers, I still haven't done that video now, which is terrible of me. So sorry for that. Yes, yes, definitely will do sometime soon. Question from Kevin Abil Gaming. Favourite JDM car and Gran Turismo franchise? Uh, oh, okay, so he's listed three questions, this is the first one. Uh, Favourite Japanese car in, in general? I would say, I always loved the R33 Skyline. Just, yeah, always, no matter what. Absolutely loved it, so any kind of version of that is awesome. What brought you into liking Gran Turismo? Um, yeah, playing it with my friend when I was younger, before I owned the game. You know, my friend had a PS1 before I did, so just got a taste for it uh, from that, really. But you know, I was always into racing, like, 
My dad always loved, and still does, uh, Formula One and British touring cars, so we used to watch that as a family, and we used to go to, uh, to races as well. My dad used to go to Silverstone every single year with his friend as well, so yeah, just a long-standing history and interest in racing, to be honest. And uh, number three, favourite race in any Gran Turismo game? Wow, that's, that's a tough question, actually. Um, I don't know if I have a, a specific favourite race, but um, in terms of tracks, I absolutely love Red Rock Valley. Such a shame that we haven't seen it since GT2. Um, I love Apricot Hill and I love Midfield as well, so any, uh, any races that have those tracks, really. Question from Felipe Maciel. What's your favourite Gran Turismo mystery? Be it cameos, cut cars, any form of content. Also, congrats on that milestone. Well deserved. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Um, I feel like I'm saying the exact same response to all these people who say congrats. So, sorry. <laughs> um, What's your favourite Gran Turismo mystery? Uh, I'd probably say the the kind of the, the hidden second route at Special Stage Route X. That was something I actually found out about quite recently. I don't know why I hadn't found out about it before, but yeah, once I found out about that and I went on the game and looked at it, it's that is amazing. It would be unbelievable to actually drive that one day. Um, question from JM69. What would you think about a Gran Turismo 2 remake with all the cut content included? Um, I doubt that it will ever happen. I don't think Gran Turismo has ever kind of shown any inclination to go back and remake uh, one of their original games. But it would be absolutely amazing if that did happen. I would absolutely love it. Uh, question from Squizzle24. Favourite track in the GT series? Mine has always been Trial Mountain because of the winding roads and awesome scenery. Well, check it out on the Gran Turismo 7 trailer. Um, if you're into Trial Mountain. Uh, Favourite track overall? Um, out of the three that I previously mentioned, I'd probably say Midfield is my favourite. Because it's quite a fast track. Um, I also quite like uh, Dragon Trail on Gran Turismo Sport. It just feels like it's a really easy track to get good at. So, yeah, that's a good one. Question from... Oh, man, all these... Oh, you lot have such hard names to pronounce. Rod... Rod... Oh, for God's sake. Roduclea Harenvol. Quick question, which one of both GT1 and GT2 has the most challenging AI, and which one of them has a better gameplay? So in terms of challenging AI, probably the original Gran Turismo. I actually think that the AI has got progressively easier over the course of time. I don't know whether you guys think the same, but yeah, it just felt like the AI was originally way more ruthless and aggressive, and now nowadays they almost kind of jump out of your way, really. So, yeah, definitely... Uh, GT1 um, for the, the toughest gameplay. Okay, question from Tom Elliott. He says, great job, mate. Always have you on in the background, bringing a bit of nostalgia. Can you do your best in the world? Jeremy Clarkson impression. I just did. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. Appreciate you watching my videos. You know, a lot of people do come and say to me that like my video is very relaxing or nostalgic or both. And you know what? Like I try not to be. Um, you know, like a, a clickbait YouTuber, if you like, or, you know, a YouTuber who does a bunch of jump cuts. Although, I appreciate I might have to do a few in this video, uh, just to edit it quickly. Um, yeah, so, I always just try and make kind of, almost documentary style videos, really, because I just try and like to, I like to cover as much as I possibly can in one video, you know, and leave no stone unturned, and all that kind of thing. Cool, so, question from ZippoBoy00. Favourite and least favourite Gran Turismo cars from each game. Oh man, I don't know if I could do it from each game, but um, generally, cars that I have uh, really good memories of. Um, definitely the, the FTO LM Edition from the original Gran Turismo. That has always been one of my absolute favourite cars, and it's a car that I used to drive all the time when I was younger. You know, before I was um, a very good driver on Gran Turismo, uh, that car was just so easy to drive because it was four-wheel drive, so... Yeah, definitely that. Um, probably the GTO LM edition as well. Definitely got fond memories of that. Uh, on Gran Turismo 2, uh, I tell you what, two cars that actually stick out to me are the uh, the Zanavi Silvia and the Wedge Sports Celica. Um, and the reason why I remember those cars in particular is because it took me forever to unlock them. Because um, obviously in, uh, in some of the, the cups on on Gran Turismo 2, the prize car you get is just random. 
So honestly, it, it took me so long to get those two cars that uh, I really did enjoy driving them once I finally unlocked them. Uh, and also, probably the Toyota GT199. Again, you know, when I was younger, it took me ages to get all golds on the super license. So to finally get that prize car, it that felt great. Question from another Gran Turismo YouTuber, Zocker1990. Uh, go and check out their channel if you can. It's really great. Uh, they say, "Congrats, Matt. I know how hard it is to grow in the Gran Turismo niche. Uh, thank you very much." I'm also building up my GT collection at the moment, so my questions would be, which of your items was the hardest to find and which is the most valuable or cost you most to get it? Um, wow, well, tough question really. Hardest to find. Um, you see, like the, the temptation is just to say the beta build of Gran Turismo again, but I'm trying not to just say the same thing again because I'd like to you know, cover off more of my collection really, but as I say, it's probably best saved for another video. Um, but in terms of the beta build of Gran Turismo, um, I actually bought that um, and review builds of Test Drive 5 and Total Driving, uh, which is Grand Tour Racing 98 in the, uh, in the USA. Um, I bought those three together and they actually did cost me a fair bit of money. They actually they actually cost me about, I think it was about £400 for the three, which is a lot. Like, I don't generally spend that much on stuff, but for me it was just an opportunity to get something that had never come up before. So I did actually jump at the chance. Um, also, in terms of uh, stuff that cost me a lot, um, definitely the, the two beta builds of Smuggler's Run that I have, and the beta build of Midnight Club as well. So they definitely cost me like a, a few hundred pounds as well when I originally bought them. And that was actually a good few years ago now. Uh, but to be honest, you know, when I'm buying this stuff, uh, I'm never looking at it as in, you know, is it good value, you know, can I sell it on for a profit? Um, most of the time I'm just buying this stuff to just keep in my collection. So, you know, um, obviously you don't want to pay too much for stuff and get ripped off, but also, you know, I'm just buying it because I want to have it and I want to kind of look after it and preserve it for the you know future generations so um, hardest to find yeah so I'm gonna say the the Nissan 350z version of Gran Turismo concept um, I've only ever seen that come up for sale once I think and I was again very lucky to get it cool so we NASCAR says what's the pièce de résistance of your Gran Turismo collection uh, don't know. <laughs> uh, I feel like a lot of the uh, the Gran Turismo special editions that I have, um, I have actually seen them for sale since. You know, even the rarer ones. Like, like I remember originally, it took me forever to get a, a Gran Turismo 2 test drive disc. Um, but now, you know, I've seen quite a few for sale recently. So maybe at one point, I would have said that. Um, but I have to be honest, like Gran Turismo 2 Test Drive did turn out to be not quite as exciting as I would have hoped. I remember reading that it was originally, uh, well, someone said that it was actually a really early build of the game, but it actually turned out to be one of, uh, if not the latest demo build that was actually released for Gran Turismo 2, so yeah, not quite as useful as I, I thought it was going to be. Uh, so in terms of Fiesta Resistance, yeah, probably their GT beta build as well. Bit of a cop out to say that, but... Yeah, that's what I genuinely think. Uh, not a question, but a comment from Wesley C. He says, wow, decades ago. Many congrats. Sorry, many years. Congrats. Thanks, Wesley. Yeah, it's been a tough old grind, but yeah, we did get there in the end. Question from Major Carney. Boxes or briefs? Uh, yeah, good question. Good question. Uh, definitely boxes at the moment, but considering trying briefs. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> and... Uh, they also say, what setup programs do you use to game and create videos? Cool, good question. Another video that I have considered doing is uh, a video that shows you like my, my setup, basically, for how I play and record games, just to kind of help everybody else out who's looking to film their own footage. I've recently bought uh, an Elgato HD S60+, Plus, I think it was, or was it just a HD60? Um, anyway, that's why I'm just trying to think off the top of my head. Um, that's honestly amazing that really is amazing you know it records in such good quality uh, i absolutely love it um historically i've used a roxio game cap hd which has definitely served me well 
but I think, yeah, it just felt recently like it was a good time to just take a step up and modernise the tech that I was using. Uh, in terms of like capturing PS1 footage though, I use EPSXE. Um, I used to use Fraps to record, uh, but the file sizes are so huge with Fraps. I actually switched to just like uh, the inbuilt uh, Windows, or is it the Xbox like game recorder? Uh, that does the job really well. And recently I actually bought a new laptop, uh, I bought an Acer Nitro 5, uh, which is a gaming laptop. Uh, and I've actually started to record uh, PS2 games through the PC SX2 emulator on there as well. Um, on my old laptop I actually couldn't play a lot of PS2 games in full speed, but now, uh, with that new laptop, it just feels like it can probably handle most PS2 games. So. Uh, and, you know, you can also record the games in such good quality, uh, so I probably will do a lot more recording on PS2 emulators from now on. Uh, oh, and in, oh, Major Carney says, congrats again and great job on the content. Thank you so much. Question from Groovy Baby. Uh, well, well, sorry, it's not a question but a comment. It said, should have way more subscribers, the grind has been severe for you. It has, you know. But I'll tell you what, in the last couple of years, as I say, when I've kind of you know, uh, I sat down, I looked at my channel analytics, I looked at what videos of mine you guys really enjoyed watching, um, and I basically focused my attention on just creating the videos that I thought people would love to see. And I think since then, uh, it's really paid dividends, so thank you. Question from Mark Nolan, he says, Which car in Gran Turismo that doesn't have a race mod would you give one to, and why? Man, tough question, tough question. Um... I guess the, the one thing that always stuck out to me on Gran Turismo 2 in particular was that very few BMWs and Mercedes cars actually had racing modifications. So, uh, you know what, in general, I would definitely have loved to see more racing modifications for Mercedes. Uh, we know, obviously, that Gran Turismo tried to put in more special models for, for Mercedes, like the CLK GTR, the CLK race car, uh, and uh, one of the DTM touring cars as well. Um, but it just seems like they couldn't get the licensing, so that's probably the reason why we didn't actually see them. So, yeah, definitely would have loved to see more of those Mercedes cars. Uh, cool question from James Smith. Congrats on 20k subs. Thank you so much. It's awesome that you've brought together a group of Gran Turismo fans that share the same passion about the series as you do. Excellent work. It's greatly appreciated. Well, you know what? It's really appreciated that you've subscribed to my channel and left such an awesome comments. Thank you. Question. What is your dream car, and is it currently in a GT game? Um, dream car, yeah, it's hard. It's hard to actually pick kind of one car in general. Definitely, you know, the R32 Skyline is a car that I've always loved. Nissan GTR, as we said, and the Jaguar uh, F-Type as well. I'd definitely have to pick those three. So, and yes, obviously you can drive, um, I think, all of those cars in, in Gran Turismo games. Question from Psycho. Says, wow, congrats on 20k, Matt. I remember watching your videos probably for as long as I've known about the existence of YouTube. Uh, wow, that is a long time. Thank you so much for your for your dedication. That's amazing. And I'm just really glad that you like my videos. My question is, which cars from the older GT games would you like to see return in future GT games and what tracks too? Um, not sure about which cars, but to be honest, uh, tracks. Yeah, I feel like I'm always going on about the same thing, but Red Rock Valley, man. Like, why Why was it only in Gran Turismo 2? Why did it never come back? It was just such a fan favourite. Uh, I know a lot of stuff, actually, um, didn't return from Gran Turismo 2 in terms of cars and tracks. So, yeah, really weird that they uh, kind of created all that content and then they seem to have scrapped a lot of it. So, yeah, it would just be really nice to see more stuff from GT2 come back. And in general, for the next Gran Turismo, just a lot of tracks from the original Gran Turismo games in general I think and obviously we've seen Trial Mountain on the trailer so it looks like we are, we are going to get some classic tracks back which is great. Question from Jeremiah Gandhi, congrats on 20k subs man, thank you. What's your favourite car in Gran Turismo 2? It's a really hard question. Uh, it's really tough to pick out one car, do you know what actually, um, I don't know if this will be my favourite car but the Alpha 155. Um, when you apply racing modifications to it, I absolutely loved those racing modifications. But it was just a shame that um, the horsepower output from that car was just, it was really not great. 
So I always remember, you know, applying racing modifications to that car, driving it, but just wishing it had more power. Obviously, you know, now we could go back and create a hybrid of it. Uh, but it would have been nice to do it legitimately. FNAF <laughs> Maniac. I'm a person that is same years old with your channel. So, I am a human form of your channel. Thank you. Uh, yes you are. <laughs> wow, that, it's absolutely crazy, you know. Um, you know. I remember when I started on YouTube, it just wasn't a big thing at all. And now these days, you know, kids, they, they don't want to be actors and stuff, they want to be YouTubers. And that's just really crazy to think about. So, yeah, thank you for your dedication. Sappy, Sappy Zanza. Can we do a race on GTS against you this weekend? Congrats! Thank you for the congratulations. Um, got to be honest, I'm not that good on GT Sport. Um, but definitely, I will be putting the hours in on GT7. So yes, when GT7 comes out, let's let's do it. Question from Tank09YT, one of my channel members. So thanks, Chris, for, for being a member. Congrats, Matt. What's your hardest race event and race track? Um, hardest race event? I have to be completely honest, I don't think any event in Gran Turismo is all that challenging. Uh, well, you know, one race at, at Rome springs to mind. But even then, you know, I think if you have the right car, then I think any event is quite easy. Well, not, not necessarily easy, but definitely doable. Um, yeah, the definitely actually the, the Trial Mountain Endurance race when the Vector M12 is involved. Now that is a genuine challenge for sure, so yeah, I'd probably say that. Even if it was a glitch, um, yeah, still massively, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a good test, let's say that. Question from Evan, okay, wow, so I was going to say question from Evan Hanley. Um, he's listed about 20 questions actually, so I'll try and burn through these as fast as I can. Favourite and least favourite Tekken game? Uh, my favourite would probably be either Tekken 3 or the original Tekken Tag. Um, I don't really have a least favourite Tekken game, to be honest. Favourite and least favourite driver game? Uh, tough question. Fa my favourite is either Driver 1 or 2. Least favourite? Uh, probably Driver San Francisco. Have you ever played Driver 3? If so, have you heard about the early press demo being found on an Xbox debug kit recently? It looks better, has more content, different concept art, and looks very different, but it's less stable and being explored. Um, I think I have heard of it. I think Racing Freak, uh, one of my friends, let me know about this. Um, but I haven't really explored it in any depth. Um, but that is awesome. And yes, I have played Driver 3. Uh, will, you do have a more, will you ever do more prototype or press kit analysis videos? Yes, definitely. They just take a while to research, so yes. Um, top 5 favorite games of all time uh, oh, definitely I think GTA 3 Soul Calibur 3 is really hard to narrow it down to, to just five um, probably Tekken 3 I would put in there maybe a surprising one for you guys but FIFA 07 uh, I have a lot of great memories from from that game um, that's four isn't it Oh man, there's going to be ones that I'm forgetting for sure. Mortal Kombat Deception. Maybe. That was just off the top of my head. Um, what car from the Gran Turismo series would you love to own and why? Uh, yeah, I think we've kind of covered that already. Are there any retro games you never owned growing up that you wanted to play? Uh, this might surprise some people, but I've never played a Final Fantasy game. Yeah. It's true, so definitely at some point I should go back and play some of those. Um, Favourite video game character you like? Uh, yeah, interesting question actually. Um, I did actually read through some of these before doing the video, so I have got a general idea of what I'm going to say to this. Um, um, first of all, I'd probably say Abe from Abe's Odyssey. And you know what, it's the weirdest thing. When I was younger, um, I just had a bit of an obsession for this character. But the weirdest thing was that I'd never actually played the game. So I have no idea where I got kind of this interest from. but. I remember back in like the early days of gaming, I used to name my save games like Abe, or like my character name would be called Abe. Um, then after that, I also I also went through a phase of calling my characters uh, Kazuya after Kazuya on Tekken 2. But the weird thing was that I was so young at the time. Um, I remember uh, on V Rally 2, you could 
kind of write your own name on your license plate. So I went to write Kazuya, but I actually spelt it wrong. So it just says Kazua. Uh, I definitely got some footage of that somewhere. And I still have my old save games as well. So uh, yeah, so those are the two that spring to mind. Um, are you on any forum like the cutting room floor? Um, I'm not really, though. I am on Discord, so you can add me there. Uh, favorite PSW magazine you read? Uh, gotta be honest, really hard to just pick one, so I'm not sure. Uh, favorite gaming console you own? Uh, PS2, I think. Gotta be PS2. Uh, favorite gaming channel or channels you watch on YouTube? Man, I could honestly go on forever uh, about the channels that I watch, so I'm just gonna do some. Uh, that just come off the top of my head, so there's probably loads that I, I, I will really wish that I mentioned, but I've forgotten to. Um, so definitely in the, in the speedrunning niche, uh, I like to watch Carl Jobs and Ryan White as well, so our White Goose. Uh, definitely love watching their videos. I um, also love uh, Vadim M, uh, Zach Cox in the, in the Grand Theft Auto niche. Uh, I like watching Main Man Sui in uh, the Tekken niche as well, and also Minor Highway. Uh, they do some really awesome TAS Tekken videos, which are just oh, so much fun to watch. Um, I like uh, Apollo Legend, um, Summoning Salt as well, uh, another speedrunning channel, or channels if you like. Uh, probably stuff I'm forgetting. I also I actually do play Pokemon Go as well. Uh, so there's a few people like Zionic that I would mention. He's a really great presenter. I absolutely love hearing Zionic. Uh, FP Sticks as well. Um, i trying to think. Those are the kind of two main Pokemon Go YouTubers I watch. Then there's others like um, Pogo Kiang. Um, Kayla Peng. Kayla Peng as well. Uh, so yeah, I really enjoy watching those. Um, in the Gran Turismo niche, uh, yeah, Jimmy Broadbent, Super GT. So yeah, those are all the ones I can think of for now, but yeah, def I've definitely forgotten some that I would, would have loved to mention, so uh, really sorry if I didn't mention your channel. Cool, The Romanizer. Congrats, I loved your videos. Uh, I actually started playing GT5 again since your vids really inspired me to play in my former Gran Turismo series, uh, former favourite series. Uh, awesome, really glad to hear I could inspire you to, to pick up that game again. On to my question, what brought you into the Gran Turismo franchise, why did you start to make videos about it? Just because um, I've played those games like all my life, so I just have really great memories of them. Night Drive says, what's your favourite easter egg in GT? Uh, wah. Probably the Honda Asimo robot on Tokyo Route 248. Dan says, congrats bro, I've been really enjoying your videos since I found you in my recommended. Thanks Dan, uh, really appreciate you watching. So his question is, how have sim racers like GT and driving real cars affected your perceptions of the different car brands? So yeah, I've got to say thank you for, for such an original question. Uh, it's really interesting. Um, definitely driving a Volkswagen in real life has really made me uh, appreciate the, the build quality of Volkswagen. Honestly, really well made cars. You know, German engineering is, is fantastic. Um, yeah, I think... Generally speaking, in, in Gran Turismo, it's just made me have a massive uh, appreciation for Japanese muscle cars, you know, uh, all the way from the original Gran Turismo. They've just been, you know, some of the fastest cars to drive on the series, so yeah, I would definitely love to own one one day. Cool. Question from Bleak Button. What is your favourite colour to use in GT and what is your favourite shade of it to use? I would probably say the, the midnight purple colour you can apply to some Nissan Skylines on Gran Turismo. Um, Definitely remember it from Gran Turismo 4, but was probably on other games as well. Why did you? <laughs> Question from Dan Solo. Uh, he says, "Why did you? Uh, why did you start working for Pan Intelligence?" Uh, yeah. So um, obviously, you know, I love doing YouTube, but uh, I do it in my spare time. So I have a, a real life job um, alongside it. I work for Pan Intelligence. Um, we're a company who makes machine learning and predictive analytics software, so it's really interesting stuff to be involved with. Um, I started working there because there was a job opening there, and um, yeah, I, I went for it and I got the job, which was fantastic. Uh, Dan Solo is actually, he, he is the, the child of a lady I work with called Ellen, so shout out to you Dan, thanks for the question. So next question from Jake Thompson, hi Matt, hope you managed to get round to answering mine. Of course I will. Would be great. So here's my question. If you could take one car from Gran Turismo 2 and place it in your garage, uh, which would it be and why? 
Um, yeah, good question actually. Um, I think although I, I love a lot of the, the older cars from Gran Turismo games, um, I do really enjoy the, the tech that modern cars actually have in them now. So um, for me, if I were to take a car from Gran Turismo 2 and put it in my garage, um, it would just have to be one for like weekend driving, I think, just to take out and enjoy it. Um, I know this isn't a car that I've mentioned previously, but maybe the Spoon S2000. Uh, I'd love to own a car with the VTEC engine, that, I think that would be amazing. Although one of my friends at work, he, he owned a Civic Type R with, with the VTEC engine. And he said, to be honest, it only kicks in at like past 80 miles an hour. So there's actually very few uh, situations where you can actually use it in real life anyway. So uh, that was his feedback anyway. So uh, he actually got rid of his Civic Type R and he's now got a, an Abarth Fiat 500. So that is pretty cool. It sounds like a tractor though, but, <laughs> but it's cool. It is cool. Question from L. Imbecile. Could be like imbecile. Sorry, no offense. I got this notification and I wasn't subscribed. Well, <laughs> I don't know what this, this. I don't know for what is this channel, but I just hit the sub button. Congrats! Thank you so much for subscribing. Uh, really random of you to just uh, see my post like this. YouTube's algorithm must have picked it up for some reason. So, thank you for subscribing. Really hope you enjoy my upcoming videos. Question from Simon Orford. First of all, congratulations on 20k subscribers, brilliant contract, uh, maybe it means content, on a brilliant series. Uh, thank you so much for subscribing, Simon, really glad that you like my content. Uh, on to my question, what car from any of the Gran Turismo would you love to own in real life, or have you owned any car that you first drove on Gran Turismo? Uh, I haven't yet bought a car that I have driven on Gran Turismo, but uh, certainly I'm sure that I will do in the future. Um, and also, you know, we kind of answered it already. Uh, it's a very popular question, you know, what car from Gran Turismo would you love to own in real life? Uh, definitely, uh, you know, Nissan GTR, Spoon S2000, something like that, I think. Uh, question from Ella Madonna, a really interesting uh, profile pic there, I love a good Simpsons meme. First of all, congratulations, which was the GT game you spent more time on? Uh, definitely Gran Turismo 2, trying to unlock those those cars that I mentioned earlier from the GT300 series. Definitely that. Uh, comment from Popcan Blue. Congrats, you deserve it. I hope it continues. Thank you so much. I, I really hope it continues as well. Congrats on the 20k from Josh97. Thanks, Josh. Cody Klupfer. Congratulations on the milestone. Thanks for your videos and the awesome content. You're very welcome. You're really making me want to dust off my PS3 and jump back into GT5 or 6. Yeah, do it, man. Do it. Honestly, I, I hadn't played GT5 and 6 in ages before I, I brought them out for the Easter egg videos, and I'm so glad that I did, because I, I felt like I just got a brand new appreciation for those games. So yeah, definitely do it. Question from Redsa. What's your favourite YouTuber? Myself. No, uh, I'm just kidding. Uh, you know what? Really, really difficult to pick one. Um, obviously... I've mentioned a few YouTubers that I watch already. Um, oh, actually, angry video game nerd, James Rolfe. Uh, he was a real inspiration to me in terms of filmmaking, I would say. And he was um, one of the first YouTubers that I ever subscribed to on YouTube. It's unbelievable to see the, the AVGN series still going and bring back Bored James as well. Cool. So, question from Fares Hesham. If you could own... <laughs> if you could own one... Oh, this is slightly different. If you could own one car of your choice from GT2 in real life for free, what would that be? Uh, I would get whatever the most expensive car is on Gran Turismo 2, sell it, uh, buy a Jaguar F-Type, and then just keep the profits. <laughs> question from Alexander Vu. Congratulations, well, not a question, but uh, congratulations for your 20,000 subscribers. Keep it up, that. Thank you so much. Uh, JDM guy, congrats, mate. Thank you so much. Oh wow, what a... I, mean, I really do appreciate the comment, don't, don't get me wrong. Before I get into the questions, I'm just going to read out his comment that he made, so... By the way, congratulations on 20k subscribers, you deserve it. You've made tons of great videos such as the Driver T Secret and Beta Cars, Grand Turismo Beta Build showcases the GTA 3 videos, and other videos such as the Simpsons Hit and Run Beta Prototype. You've come a long way in this journey, you've got people to narrate in your videos, very true. Um, obtained countless demos made to a prototype gaming disc and you even narrated for Vadim M in one of his videos. Yes, I did, that was really enjoyable. Congratulations Matt J, you're a legend among the GT community, the GTA 3 community and also the Driver Madness community, keep it up. Uh, just want to say thank you so much, honestly I really do love to receive comments like that, I do read them all 
Uh, so yeah, it just makes it makes it really worthwhile to me and makes me want to just keep on what I'm doing. So thank you for taking the time to write that. Uh, onto his questions, or onto their questions, should I say? Uh, number one, how is it that you obtain beta builds or unique editions of games? Um, just uh, looking on the likes of eBay, uh, and also I used to uh, go on assembler games quite a lot. It's it's just knowing where to look really, just knowing where they come up, and just kind of checking back quite often, uh, just for new stuff to come up. When did you get into the Driver series? Um, I bought, or my parents bought me the original Driver game on PS1, and also Gran Turismo series. Uh, yep, yeah, again, I own the original Gran Turismo on PS1, and I've just played it ever since. Are you thinking of shifting your content to something else other than Gran Turismo? I mean, Gran Turismo videos are fine, you can keep on doing them, but what are your thoughts? Um, yeah, I've definitely got a few other things coming up that aren't Gran Turismo related, but um, I do fully understand that I think most people who subscribe to me are Gran Turismo fans, so if I want to keep getting the views that I do, uh, I think the core of my content still has to be about Gran Turismo. So yeah, but do do look out because I've got a few surprises coming up soon. Number four, what's your least favourite Gran Turismo? Probably Gran Turismo Sport. What's your favourite Gran Turismo glitch? Uh, yeah, it's up to say. Off the top of my head, possibly the glitch on Motorsports Land on Gran Turismo 2, where you go on like the grass on the inside of the corner and for some reason it makes your lap time invalid, which I understand, but also then uh, removes the the clipping. You can I'm trying to think how to describe it. You can just no clip through the walls and in like out of the track boundaries. Really random. Don't know why that happens. Um, but it's just a, a glitch that I remember finding when I was younger. So yeah, that one that one always sticks with me. Um, do you have any desire to make another video from any game in the Driver series, especially with the beta content that came in this year? Yeah, so if you guys weren't aware, um, there was a pre-release build of Driver Discovered, and on that build uh, there was a previously undiscovered beta car in, I think it was the, the Las Vegas level. Uh, so re yeah, really amazing to see. Thanks for racing. Thanks to Racing Freak for letting me know about that. Uh, I always love to, to hear about new Driver discoveries. Um, I think what I would take away from this in general is um, what I want to do is I would love to make uh, more kind of news content I think I've always really tried to make evergreen content so that is you know content that you could watch at any time and it would still be relevant but I think you know when new discoveries are made um, I think I should make more of an effort to to make a quick video just to let people know about it really so uh, yeah that's that's kind of how I would answer that question uh, how intrigued or surprised are you that you found out a driver 2 pre-release build was discovered and some beta audio in the demos was found. Um, I haven't actually heard about the, the beta audio. Um, am I surprised? Um, yeah, I guess so. I was surprised, but I do know that, you know, being a member of those sort of communities, that new new builds of games are just being found all the time. I mean, who knows what people have got at the back of their cupboards, you know? Who knows what these old journalists have, have still got from their time at the, the magazines they work for? So it doesn't surprise me that new stuff is turning up. Uh, but it's always great to see. And last, does the pink Toyota Vitz equal God? Uh, no, but the yellow Evo does. Cool, next question from Sitores. What's your favourite GT from worst to best? I know you like them all, but probably it would still be cool to rank them up. Uh, wah. Yeah, I know we've sort of answered this already, but we haven't done a whole order. So at the bottom I'd probably put GT Sport. Um, then probably... I don't dislike any GT game, so this is uh, probably a list from least favourite to most favourite. So yeah, GT Sport, then probably GT 5 and 6, then 3, then 4, uh, then 1, then 2. Um, oh yeah, it's Gran Turismo. Yeah, I was going to say Gran Turismo Concept and PSP. I haven't really played too much GT PSP, so I'm going to leave that one out. And Gran Turismo Content wasn't really a, a full release, so I'll probably leave that one out as well. Question from Ray's Racer. What's your favourite Gran Turismo GT2? Tyler, not Gran Turismo related, but what are some of your favourite fighting games and favourite fighting game characters? Good, thanks Thanks for the question, Tyler. Uh, definitely Tekken 3 and Tekken Tag. Um, oh, you know what? I always loved the, the side games on Tekken as well. So on Tekken 3 you had uh, Tekken... What was it? Tekken Ball? Yeah, Tekken Ball. And then in Tekken Tag you had Tekken Bowl. Uh, that was really fun because especially when I found out that you could knock down members of the crowd such as Dr. Boskonovich with your bowling ball, that was cool. 
Um, I also remembered grinding for a perfect game on Tekken Ball, so I actually did score 300 points. Uh, and then my save game got corrupted, so that is sadly no longer my, my record on the game. Uh, one day I must go back and actually record that, but I haven't played Tekken Ball for so long, uh, it's, that's it's gonna be a grind for sure. Yeah, favourite fighting game characters? Oh. Dragonov, I like Dragonov. Uh, always liked Brian, always liked Paul, Jin, Kazuya, Hey Hachi. Uh, yeah, it's a bit of a Mishima fan. Um, but yeah, no characters that I really dislike, to be honest. P Jack in Tekken Tag. Ah, oh, Main Man Sui did a video where he analysed P Jack in, in Tekken Tag, the original Tekken Tag. And he's just. Oh, I never realised what an awful character he was in that game. There was no balancing back then. Um, so yeah, that was just really interesting to see. And also how broken True Ogre was on the original Tekken Tag. And um, Armor King and King on the original Tekken. Uh, yeah, I'll definitely try and watch those videos because, again, you know, it's brand new information to me about some of my favourite games. So, yeah, really, really awesome to see. Isaac, another subscriber who's been with me a long time, so thank you so much for sticking with the channel. To say that you are a small YouTuber is false. Thank you, Isaac. Appreciate that. Someone who consistently makes GT content and is at the level they are now is just great. And not to mention Tekken there, and again. Hope. You keep going forward with that positivity you have. Look forward to future content on, on the channel. Thank you, Isaac. There will always be more videos, I promise. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Now, my question. Out of all Gran Turismo, which do you believe is the best and worst? Uh, yeah, probably Gran Turismo Sport is the worst. Um, I really do enjoy the, the single-player modes of gameplay they have added um, over the course of time, which has made it a lot better for me. Um, the best... Um, yeah, so I always consider, like, the best in a series different to my personal favourite in a series. I'd probably say the best GT game is Gran Turismo 4. Uh, but yeah, really looking forward to Gran Turismo 7. Feels like a bit of a return to self for the Gran Turismo series, and I hope it is. Um, so yeah, really looking forward to seeing what comes of that. Question from Your Gem. Uh, they say, where is Jenny? Uh, don't know what you mean. But I actually have a cousin called Jenny, uh, and she's back in Cheshire. <laughs> and finally, question from someone different. Do you think that the rotary engine is the far superior engine, besides reliability of course, and fuel efficiency, and oil consumption? Just say yes. Uh, I have to admit, I'm not like overly well up on the, uh, the technical aspects of cars, um, but one thing that has stood out to me is, um, you know, obviously Mazda's use of the rotary engine back in Le Mans in the, like, the early to mid 90s. That was really cool to see. So I'm not necessarily gonna say yes that it's the superior engine. I actually love a turbocharged engine myself. Uh, even though my, pol my VW Polo isn't that powerful, uh, you can really feel the difference that the turbo gives you. Because uh, I have driven just the, the standard, I think it's the one litre Polo. I've got the it's the 1.2 turbo and you can really feel the difference so I love I love modern turbochargers uh, I think they're really cool and with that I think we are finally at the end of the Q&A man well I'll tell you what I'm gonna have to edit this down because I think I've recorded over an hour's worth of your questions thank you so much to everybody who submitted one uh, and I'll see you for the next videos in the future thanks guys